So the question is, how long does Blue Jay make it before he dies? Day one, starvation. Get an elytra and immediately clip the edge of a city boat and plummet to his grave. I think we all know Blue is gonna fall down a hole five seconds into recording. Five minutes, lava. Well, joke's on all of you, you're all wrong. It didn't happen any of those ways. And there's no actual video evidence that it did happen, so don't mind this creeper hole behind me. Welcome back everybody to another episode of The Bedrock Guide. Now I know what you're thinking. The last episode we totally said that our overarching goal for this series was to go as long as possible without dying. Well, apparently as long as possible for me is less than 24 hours. So our first death is in the books. Uh, it's not on camera. Okay, so here's what happened. All right, I was doing a little bit of resource gathering like we're doing now, which we're about to finish because this ax is gonna break. But I was doing a little bit of resource gathering. I got a message on Discord that I wanted to reply to. So I just navigated away from my screen for like three seconds. Okay, and in that three seconds time, I hear this. And by the time I can get back to my screen and try to run away, all my stuff is splattered all over the ground and I have no idea what hit me. Well, I do have an idea what hit me. It was a creeper. So unfortunately, our first death is in the books. We've got that out of the way. Now we can get on to the actual goal of not dying for as long as possible because now we don't have the first death to worry about. <laughs> oh, I wish that was still at zero. Can we just start this series over? Can, can this be episode one? Is that okay? Can we do that? Nah, that's okay. We covered a lot of stuff in episode one and it was pretty fast paced. So we're gonna slow things up a little bit in this episode because we have a few housekeeping items to do. We've got some pretty important stuff to get established. As you can see, I've got a little bit of food in my inventory. I've got some chicken here and I've got some cooked mutton there and a few apples that we're gonna hang on to. We're gonna save those, but we need to get a consistent food source, which means making this farm a little bit better than just a few uh, tilled areas of dirt thrown across the, the ground here next to some water we, we've got some work to do so we're gonna get a farm all set up and we're gonna try to get some animal pens but first as you might have seen the inventory is rather full and I actually went ahead and got some flowers over here and I threw them back on the ground because I didn't have room to carry them all but I wanted to keep all these flowers anyway because I like the colors I think they could come in handy for some dyes a little later on and in fact let's just go ahead and grab this blue flower right here this is a tradition of mine at the very beginning of every Minecraft world, I always find a blue flower or blue dye of some sort and I dye my bed blue. So let me just go ahead and show you how to do that in the crafting table. You go ahead and take your flower and place it in any one of the slots. It doesn't matter where you place it and it will give you blue dye. Then what we can do is take the bed and take the dye, throw it in there and we've got our fancy pantsy brand new blue bed just fit for a blue jay. Next, we're gonna go ahead and replenish our stone ax because we did break it on that resource gathering trip. Now, what I have been doing is showing you guys how to craft manually using the crafting table, but if you don't wanna go about learning how all, all the crafting recipes fit together, that's totally fine. There is this fancy, nice little crafting recipe book over here. You can just select the item that you want. It'll toss all the items in the crafting table for you as long as you have them, and then you can just grab it like normal. I'll probably be doing a little bit of both of these uh, methods throughout the course of this series, but I am gonna try to learn as many crafting recipes as possible and do this manual because for the longest time, I've just been using the recipe book, and I wanna try to learn all the crafting recipes just as a personal goal especially since i can't keep the uh the, the, the no deaths personal goal i think having a uh, a crafting recipe goal could could be good for me there's no way i could possibly mess that up right as i mentioned before our inventory is getting rather full and we're gonna need some room if we're gonna want to continue working on farms and getting animals and all that kind of stuff so we need to have a chest to put our items in in order to craft a chest, you just take your planks and put them in the same formation that you did with the furnace, just in a little square with the middle hole empty, and then you can grab your chest and you're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and place this on the opposite side of the room, just because this is getting a little busy over here, and we do have a single chest. The nice thing about chests, if you don't know this, you can take a second chest, we'll craft it on up here just like so, and then you can place it right down next to it and it will become a double chest. Basically, having a double chest will allow you to have twice 
as much storage within one inventory space. So the things that we don't need right now, we're just gonna kinda toss in here. We'll try to stay as organized as possible and put like things together. So all wood materials, maybe we'll put wool down here. Maybe we'll put stone up at the top. Maybe we'll put crops and food all on the same row. It's nice to continue staying organized so that you don't have to you know, go hunting through a disorganized chest. You can find everything relatively easy. And since I can't seem to keep myself alive for more than 24 hours, we're just gonna go ahead and throw that on. That is not something we crafted. We found that on the zombie that kind of gave us the jump scare down there in the first episode. Uh, so, you know, we should be able to protect ourselves with a little bit of armor. Hopefully we'll last a little bit longer now. As you can see, most of this wheat has grown into maturity and so have these carrots right here. So let's go ahead and talk about wheat and carrots for just a moment. If we go over here and break this one right here that is grown into full maturity, we will only get one piece of wheat and anywhere between zero and three seeds can drop from this as well. We have a little sheep friend. This is also good to know. If we walk away while holding the wheat in our hands, certain animals will follow us, sheep being one of them. Now, if we get any farther away than six blocks, distance, it's possible that he could lose interest and just kind of wander off on his own. So if we're trying to lead animals somewhere, we want to try to stay relatively close so that, you know, we, we can keep our animals with us. But as I was saying, we'll get one wheat from this and maybe zero to three seeds. So let's break it and see what happens. We get one wheat and we got no seeds from that, which is fine. We got plenty of seeds to replenish what we already had, but we're not going to do that quite yet. I'm going to go ahead and break all of this because we are going to get a little bit better of a layout for our farm. One way that you can break farmland, by the way, if you don't want to dig it back up, is you can just jump on it a couple of times and it will break it back into regular dirt, which then you can use the hoe and till it back into farmland again if you so desire. But for the moment, we're going to break it all just so we can have a clean slate and figure out where we're going to go with our basic starter farm. In the previous episode, while we were digging down here, trying to get some cobble to get us going, I did run into some iron, which is right here. I think there are enough. Yes, there's more than, than three pieces. That's all we need. We only need three. And I'll show you exactly what we're going to do that will make farming life so much easier early on. We found eight pieces of iron and we're gonna toss them into our furnace, let those smelt up. We need three pieces of iron because we are gonna craft a bucket, which will allow us to pick up some water sources and move them wherever we like. These water sources are pretty close to the entrance to our house. So I wanna move them a little farther away and let's, we're surrounded. We've got a creeper on each side. So let's take care of these guys really quick. We don't wanna blow up our house or ourselves again. We don't need to, we don't need to be dying twice within a 24 hour time period, right? We got four pieces of iron here. We're gonna go ahead and craft a bucket by going boop, boop, boop. And we've got a brand new shiny metal bucket to take out with us and collect some water. All you gotta do is take your right click button or your respective buttons on your console or your mobile phone and pick up that water just like so. Now, because there's water surrounding all of this that didn't cause this to flow because this is technically an infinite water source, but we are not gonna need that right now. What I'm gonna do temporarily is I'm gonna place this water just in a random hole over here and then I'm gonna grab a little bit more water and place it in a diagonal corner like this and then we'll break these two blocks right here and then we should have ourselves a small two by two infinite water source we can pick up water and it will continue to give us more water and that way we can do whatever we want with our farm because we were in a little bit of a rush against daylight in episode one, we built our house relatively close to a hillside, which is fine. We wanted to be close to this water source to get some early on food growing, but now we need to figure out where we're gonna place our permanent farm, which is gonna require us to do a little bit of terraforming. We're just gonna kind of bust out some of this hillside, and I think we're gonna place our farm over off to the side of our house instead of directly in front of the doorway. I'm curious if you guys wouldn't mind leaving in the comment section, what is your favorite food source that you go to early on in a brand new Minecraft world. Honestly, for the last couple of seasons, fish has been my go-to. Uh, and when I'm talking about seasons, I'm talking about Truly Bedrock. I've been getting a ton of fish early on 
in those particular series. That's not necessarily something we're going to do right now, but we are going to get a fish farm of sorts going soon because we're going to need a lot and lots of bones for some of the things we want to do in this world. So when I'm talking about AFK fish farm, I'm not talking about the kind where you throw a fishing rod at a trap door and it hits a piston and it hits a note block and goes boop, 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 boop until a fish gets caught on your fishing rod. The kind of fish farm I really want to do early on this season is actually a smaller scale version of the fish farm that I have on my blueprint tutorial series. So if you haven't seen that yet, be sure to go check it out. Uh, but that's not something we're going to be worrying about today. We're going to be building that later on in the series. So what are some of your favorite food sources to go to early on in a brand new Minecraft world? I am curious. We are going to be doing the crop thing and then getting some beef and some pork chops. We're going to be living high on the hog, so to speak. The next thing we're going to do is drop our water source right here. And then we're going to go ahead and take our wooden hoe because we want to break this one first. And we're going to count out one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four on each side of the water source. Then we can just go ahead and fill in all the gaps here. And then we'll start planting down our crops. And we'll talk about the best format to do that. Just so we don't have any mobs that mess up our farmland either, we're going to go ahead and bust this hillside back just a little bit more. We'll eventually put a fence around it where we need to, but I just don't want anything jumping down on top of there, breaking our crops. It does happen. Spiders are annoying. They do it all the time. So mob proof your farm. I think that should be about good. The hillside looks a little wonky right now, but we'll fix that a little bit later. What we're focusing on right now is the crops. So we're gonna start by placing down a wheat seed right here and skip a row and then go another one, skip a row, go another one, skip a row, go another one, skip a row, go another one. Then what we can do is we can go all the way down these rows and start planting. Now we don't have enough to fill the entire farm yet, but that's okay. We will eventually get there. Then we're gonna place carrots in the opposite rows so that we've got wheat, carrots, wheat, carrots, wheat, carrots, wheat, carrots, wheat. The reason that we are doing an every other one format like that is that I just learned this recently. If you place crops of the same kind next to each other, they actually start growing a lot slower. But if you alternate every other row, it speeds up the growth of your crops tremendously, and you should be able to get more output from your efforts. Another thing to note too is bones. This is why we are going to get a fish farm as soon as we can. Again, probably not for a few episodes yet, but we are gonna get one. You can craft bones into bone meal. And with bone meal, you can go over here and you can start using it as a fertilizer to fully grow your crops. So since we are short on carrots, we're gonna go ahead and just speed grow these carrots really quick. And then we'll break them and get a yield of four off of that one, two more off of that one, and then another three there. So then we can go boop, 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 boop. And then we can start a second row of carrots here and keep our crops a growing. While we are waiting on those crops to grow, let's go ahead and get a way to protect them from those nasty mobs that might be coming in to break the farmland. We're gonna split this stack in half. And over on this side of the crafting table, we're gonna place half of it here and half of it there. Then the same thing on the opposite side, half here, half there. And then we're gonna do sticks right here and right here. And we should be able to get plenty of fences. 48 fences should do. So we'll go out, slam the door behind us and then go back behind and we will start placing a fence along this outer edge here to keep all mobs from this hill from jumping down. And then we'll just, for good measure and for aesthetics, do some fencing along this side. And then maybe we'll do one more row along this side. I think we're gonna go ahead and keep this section open because it is the side that's facing our house and it will give us easy access to our crops. Missed one right there. We have a few fences left, but I'm gonna go ahead and craft some more because the next thing we are going to do is go after some animals. I've built myself into a little bit of a cow pen here or a pig pen. And as you can see, there are no gates. Highly dislike fence gates. They're obnoxious, they're annoying, they're hard to get mobs through. And there's actually a better way to get in and out of this area. I've got six carpet right here and we are just gonna place one down on top of this fence post right here, here, and here. That's it, that's the way in and out. Now, you can jump and you can get out. However, 
Your animals that are inside of this pen will never be able to get out of here. They cannot find a way to jump up here. They are stuck permanently inside of this fence. So it makes it easy to go in here and breed up your animals, collect the materials. If you're coming in here to you know, slaughter some cows, send them off to the proverbial farm in the sky. <laughs> Uh, if you're coming in here to do that, you can collect all the, the leather and beef and all that kind of stuff and then head on out back on your way without ever having to open a fence gate and risking letting a baby cow come out or an adult cow. It doesn't matter which one it is. Uh, fence gates are just kind of annoying. So carpets, pro tip for you right there. Make sure to put carpets on your fences. Another quick pro tip for you as well is on your farmland. I actually forgot to do this earlier. You can place a stair right there and it is waterlogged the water will still saturate all of this farmland but then when you're going across to collect your crops you're not going to fall down into that hole get stuck in the water have to jump back out break your farmland it's just a whole lot nicer if you've got a stair in there waterlog it and you're good to go we need to stay far 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 away from those two they are nothing but trouble literally we have we have gold armor on right now and nothing else and a stone sword I think they could make pretty quick work of us. So we're going to be careful not to tangle with those pillagers. They're not very nice. But while we're keeping our distance, I have made three animal pens. This larger one is going to be for cows because I foresee myself needing more of those early on. Then I've got one for pigs and then one for sheep. So headed the opposite direction from our pillager friends over there. I think I saw a cow over here. Yep, there's one and there is a sheep. So we should be able to double down and grab both of these guys with one piece of wheat. So we're just gonna lead them back over to our house and then trap them nicely in their jails. I mean, give them a brand new home so we can lead them on in here. Come on, cow, come on. Woohoo! Come on, sheep, don't you come in here. This is not where you're supposed to live. So rather than risking taking these guys back out, we're just gonna, we're gonna look away from the camera for a second. Hey, look, random wool I found on the ground. So we've got two cows. That one will eventually grow up. If we find another cow, we can, you know, speed the breeding process along, but we've got two cows to get us rolling. Now let's go find ourselves a replacement sheep for the one that mysteriously disappeared. Baby sheep, bah, 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 bah. Did I just change the words to baby shark? Yes. Am I ashamed of it? Yes. Moving on. All right, so we're gonna lead this guy into his pen over here. Sheep are going to be fantastic for mutton. Eh, we may not use them necessarily for mutton because we do have cows and we will have pigs, but these guys we may use more so for their wool. We're gonna need tons and tons of wool for beds. Beds are very useful for multiple things. Beds, we can have one in our home, just like we've got right there, or we can have one to carry with us for a travel. Beds are also great for using things like villagers to make iron farms. So beds are going to be very, very important. And whenever we get ourselves around to finally going to the nether, bed bombing is my method of choice for going after netherite. So we'll explain what all that means later. That is very, very far down the road before we get to that. But we like to think ahead when playing Minecraft because we like to go on all sorts of adventures and build all sorts of cool stuff. So we're gonna need these kinds of materials for more than just early game things. This fellow has been hanging around our house for a number of days now. I think he's trying to sell us some things. If you don't know what this guy is, his name is Walter, the Wandering Trader. And you can open up his inventory and trade with him like you can with villagers. If you have access to emeralds, which we don't at this point in time, you can pay emeralds for pumpkins or mushrooms or seeds or cyan dye or ferns or packed ice or a number of other things that randomize throughout his list. But he has something that is much more valuable to us right now. Again, everyone divert your eyes. Hey, buddy. Hey. Hey, those are some nice llamas you got there. What are their names? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, where were we? Oh, look at these leads I found on the ground. You know what? This is going to be a lot easier than trying to use wheat to lure these guys into the pen. Oh, if you can be lucky enough to find a wandering trader and he will so happily give you his leads, you can go find a horse or a cow or a sheep or a pig or whatever kind of animal you want to find and you can lead it back by 
hand. Hello, sheep. So all you gotta do is you go walk right up to your friendly, friendly sheep and say, Meh, and then right click, and then you just pull. Now, same thing with uh, with wheat. Don't get too far away because if you run too fast, the lead will disconnect from the mob you are trying to lead toward your base area. So just keep that in mind. Pace yourself. Don't go too crazy fast. And both these guys are safe and sound inside the pin. And check in with our crop farm really quick. It is coming along really nicely. We are continuing to get fully mature crops that we can replace and replant and continue to expand. These things are growing like wildfire. We're gonna have so many crops before you know it. I know you like big warm hugs, buddy. Olaf, no you don't. Don't you blow up my, don't you blow up my farms. No, bad, bad creeper. Oh, pigs, pigs are great. Pigs drop pork chops. They breed with carrots, potatoes, beetroot. All three of those are options. And since we have carrots, that's what we're gonna use to breed them up. And fun fact, they are more fun to ride than horses. Just ask Prowl. He and I built a pig race together in a season of Truly Bedrock. It was great fun. It's actually how he and I started doing things together, such as this series. It all started with pigs. So maybe we should name you Blue Jay. Maybe we should name you Prowl. But unfortunately, if these guys get struck by lightning, they will turn into zombified piglins. And, and then they'll be just kind of useless to us. I promise I'll feed you once you get in here, okay? Boom, boom. And who's a good pig? Who's a good pig? Okay, so if you don't know what just happened, that is called the miracle of life. Basically what you do is you right click on animals with their preferred choice of food. For pigs, it is carrots, like I said, or potatoes or beetroot. You right click on each one till they get the little red hearts flying around and they will breed up a baby pig, which will eventually grow into an adult pig. And you can just continue to repeat the cycle. There is a cooldown on these guys, so you can't just breed them up right away. We will have to wait a little bit, but while we are waiting, we can go in and breed our other animals. So we will grab well, there are not two adult sheep in there, so we won't do them just yet. We'll go in here and grab our cows and breed up a couple of cows. So we should get another baby, a cute little baby cow inside of that pen. One thing to note as well is if you do feed a baby animal its preferred food choice, it does take a little bit of time off of the growth cycle. So if you just continue to feed them, hi, we have two adult sheep now. So now we can feed this guy and feed that guy, and we're gonna get another baby sheep and continue the life cycle all over again. Grow, 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 grow. Does anybody else think this house looks like an upside down house that's been buried in the ground? This is not my best work. You might be wondering too why we moved that uh, water source over into that corner. It's because I wanted to cover this over and just didn't want to have a, a huge pond in front of my house anymore. Especially because I don't know what we're going to do with this house yet. We may tear down this hill. We may build something out over this direction. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you think that I should continue to adapt this building into something that looks better when we get around to doing that, or if I should rip it down when the time comes and actually build a different house. We also have this sugarcane here that we collected in episode one that we really haven't done much with yet, but we're going to go ahead and put down a temporary sugarcane farm. This isn't going to be anything too crazy, but it will at least give us enough sugarcane to get something started. Again, Again, this is going to be temporary. We're not going to keep this here forever. Or maybe we will. Maybe we'll just like take the sugar cane with us when we leave to go to a permanent base area. But I wanted to at least get an infinite water source so we could have this going and start planting our sugar cane on either side of the infinite water source. This stuff is great for paper, which we've already got a great source of leather. So leather and paper make books. Enchantments are going to be a thing at some point. And it also is good to have paper for firework rockets. Again, we're thinking way down the road with some of this stuff, but it's all good things to have and all good things to have in mass quantity. I want to get a hold of an iron pickaxe just in case we happen to run across some diamonds in our next episode because that is going 
going to be the goal. And just for good measure, because we are running low on our sword, we'll go ahead and craft up an iron sword. It will give us a little bit more protection when we go caving, especially because our armor set is pretty lacking right now. In episode one, we did talk about one of the fun ways we're going to get you guys involved and keep Prowl and I connected on a regular basis, because this is a single player series through and through. Although Prowl is way over there off in the distance playing in the same world, we're doing our own thing, but we want to stay connected and interact a lot. So what we have decided to do is something we like to call resource roulette. So here's where you guys come into play with that. Leave in the comment section right now what you would like Prowl to get for me in the event that he loses this game. So here's where you guys come into play. I want you to leave in the comment section right now what you would like for Prowl to get for me if he loses the first round of Resource Roulette. Now this round is not going to take place until episode three, so you've got time to make comments in this video. We can review them and then start thinking about what resources we're gonna get for each other. You go comment on his video as well, comment on mine, and we will compile our data together and make a really, really fun game for you. We've already got the rules laid out. We've got an idea of how it's going to work, but we'll explain that to you when we're in the moment because it's a little bit difficult to explain with just words. We got to show you it's going to be awesome. So be sure to check out episode three for Resource Roulette. But guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section below and like and subscribe to the video. That's not just something content creators say just to blow smoke we actually are very very helped when you leave a comment like and subscribe to the channel and come back and watch more videos but thank you so much for watching this video today we will see you in the next one